how to save for a down payment. We're gonna talk about that today, give you my top tips, how to save for a down payment, right after this. Hey there, my name is Ryan Skeggs and this is the Mortgage Minute. This channel is dedicated to everything mortgage, real estate, and interest rates. Today's topic is going to be centered around those first time home buyers and how to save for a down payment. Sometimes it's, hey, I've got a decent job, but I just haven't been able to save. We are gonna provide you the top tips and you need to come in open-minded and be ready to make a change if you really wanna make home ownership a reality in the future. So first and foremost, I wanna show you the math. Then we're gonna go into the tips. So let's take a peek at, let's imagine in this scenario, I put $1,000 aside and I've got that, I put it into a separate savings account. There is, by the way, tip number one. I'm stealing my own thunder here. There is tip number one. We're going to set up a separate savings account just for home ownership. Before I continue, I'd be forever grateful for that like button. Click that subscribe and click that bell icon to be notified as I'm putting out weekly videos on the channel. I'd also love to hear from you. Do you think this is doable? Have you tried to save for a down payment? Has it worked? What worked for you? I'd love to hear your comments below. So back to it. We have $1,000. Put $1,000 aside, and this is gonna set up the start of your home ownership journey. We've got that money into a savings account. Now, $200 a month for three years. So you may be thinking, hey, I'm kind of paycheck to paycheck. It's been really difficult. I want you to go in and look at every single transaction. Go in and look at specifically the things that are on auto, that are repeated transactions on your debit or credit card. Let me give you a quick example. When I was trying to buy my first home, I had joined a really nice fancy gym to work out. Uh, it was like $150 a month. Dropping that $150 a month and doing push-ups and sit-ups at home or figuring out a way where there's plenty of videos on YouTube to use body weight exercises to be able to stay in shape, there's 150 bucks. There's a host of others, but I'm just giving you an example. You know, that Starbucks three times a week at fit, you know, five bucks a pop, $15 a week. You know, right there, 60 bucks. We've already made our $200 by those two changes. To each person's gonna have a unique opportunity to potentially maybe cut out a little bit of the fluff if the home ownership is the goal for you. Now, $200 per month, and you start with $1,000 on the side. In three years, you've got roughly $9,000. Now, maybe that sounds like a lot, maybe that sounds like a little, uh, but you can kind of see the math here as I put it up on the screen. Now that $9,000, you can still, as a first time home buyer, get down payment assistance. You can reduce your cash to close to little to nothing. So what if I was to tell you your cash to close is three to $5,000 and now you have a savings account that is based on maintenance of the home, things that might break, whatever it may be, you wanna, maybe you wanna upgrade. Now you've already got a great start to an emergency fund or to some cash on the sidelines to be able to do that. I tell specifically first time home buyers that they wanna have three to six months of monthly payments in reserve set aside just in case something happens, the air conditioner goes out, whatever it may be, right? So you wanna have three to six months. Now, is that required from underwriting? Again, I'm a loan officer, been doing this almost 15 years. No, there's not necessarily a requirement that you have to have six months reserved. Every program is different. If you'd like to better understand that, click down below to my website. You can download my free e-homebuyer guide and get a bunch of additional tips on how to become a homeowner. But with that said, I want you to consider having three to six months on the sideline because that is gonna put you in the best position. Now, the next scenario here that I'm gonna put up is starting with that same $1,000 and then putting $500 aside each and every month. Now, in this case, you can see you got over 20 grand. That's amazing. Now, you've really got the opportunity to maybe put 5% down on say a $300,000 property, be able to maybe get some grant funds to offset, 
reduce your monthly payment by not you know putting the bare minimum down or something like that again conventional loans you can put as little as three percent down fha as little as three and a half percent down so there are some great options you don't have to have 20 percent down in today's world in today's market so uh, again these are just general tips but i want you to look at that bank account line by line figure out what you could cut out i want you to have a separate savings account Start it off with a little bit of money. Make sure that there's some money in there so you can see that thing. Don't start at zero, put some money aside. Make sure you start it with something. And then monthly, you are putting money aside. That is your priority, that is your goal. If you don't know where you wanna to get to, you're gonna, you know, if you're swimming or if you're on a boat or if you're a pilot of an airplane, right? If you're just a couple degrees off, you're gonna end up in a different city, right? If you know the goal is home ownership, then get some money aside and then consistently put that money in every single time. Make that a tradition, make that a non-negotiable of putting money aside. And that will truly help you to become a homeowner. So again, would love to hear your comments below. What have you done to be able to save? I hope this helps. Check out my other videos uh, regarding anything mortgage and uh, stay safe and we'll see each other again very, very soon.